Okay, this sermon is entitled, A Pastor or a Bastard. I'd like to open up with prayer and then with a few verses. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name, amen. Psalm 71 reads, In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be put to confusion. Deliver me in thy righteousness and cause me to escape, incline thine ear unto me, and save me, be thou my strong habitation, whereunto I may continually resort, thou hast given commandment to save me, for thou art my rock and my fortress. Now when it comes to the unsaved, because they operate 24-7 in the flesh, these people deem that the term bastard is a cuss word, or an expletive term. And the reason why is because they fail to understand that this word is in the Bible and that every word of God is pure. So now let's turn over to Hebrews chapter number 12 and let's take a look at a few verses that use this word. It reads in verse 6, For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if we be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. And this word is found in the Old Testament as well, in Zechariah, and also in Deuteronomy chapter 23. And it simply means being born of a harlot, or begotten in adultery, and the term bastard means an illegitimate son. And that would be somebody pretending to be saved when they're not. And the sad truth is that a lot of so-called pastors in our churches are actually bastards and not pastors at all. Now the Bible lays out some qualifications for being a pastor. Turn over to 1 Timothy chapter 3. Now in 1 Timothy chapter 3, we don't see the term pastor, but the Bible uses synonymous terms. For instance, we see the term bishop, and I'm not talking about a bishop in the Catholic sense, the one who gives the holy orders. This is referring to a church leader or somebody in a position of rulership. It reads in verse 1, This is a true saying, If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach, not given to wine, no striker, not greedy of filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous, one that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. So there are certain qualifications to become a pastor over a local church. And the main qualification that's not even stated because it's implied that we're dealing with saved people is that they need to be saved. And if a pastor is unsaved, he should be given the title a bastard. I mean, think about it. Take some unsaved lordship preacher, for instance, like John MacArthur. He should be called the bastard of Grace Community Church because he's not a legitimate pastor. Now, if you jump back to verse 2 of chapter 3 of 1 Timothy, it says that a pastor, or in this case a bishop, needs to be apt to teach. Now, how on earth can an unsaved bastard teach the gospel? It's impossible. Anyone who's unsaved cannot give the clear gospel message correctly. That's why you will only hear a perverted gospel coming from their mouths. Think about it. You have some stupid bastard telling people how to be saved in a sermon. He's going to preach, repent of your sins. Or he's going to preach, believing's not enough. Or he's going to preach that you have to endure to the end to finally be saved. Or he's going to teach that Jesus Christ only died for the elect. Or that you can lose your salvation. And that's the best you're going to get from some stupid bastard, because they don't have the truth in them. They're not capable of preaching the true gospel, and that's why it behooves us, those that are going to a brick-and-mortar church, to find out if they have a pastor or a bastard. One way to find this out would be to read the church's statement of faith, see what they believe concerning salvation. Another way would be to contact the pastor and find out what he believes. But the last thing a person needs to do is sit under the so-called authority of some unsaved false prophet devil who's constantly preaching a false gospel week after week. 
So now let's take a listen to a clip from this so-called pastor, Lauren Livingston. Somebody requested that I expose this guy. This would be an example of a bastard infiltrating a church, deceiving the flock. Let's take a listen to him. Here goes. They'd rather have another drag. They'd rather do weed. They'd rather sleep with somebody else's wife. They'd rather commit fornication. By the way, I know for a fact that there are couples in this church who were not married and you're sleeping together. I know it. You are lost in your sins. You may be in here today. You may know every song that they just sang, but you are lost in your sins. So according to this false prophet, if you're committing fornication, you're lost in your sins. That's not what makes a person lost. What makes a person lost is that they have never believed on Jesus Christ for salvation. Their trust is in themselves, perhaps, or they're just an unbeliever. But according to this stupid so-called pastor, you're lost in your sins because of your sins. And earlier in the message, he was preaching that you needed to repent of your sins. So this is a classic example of a bastard who has no business preaching anything to anyone. He needs to get saved and then grow in grace, and then maybe eventually he can become a legitimate preacher. But we don't need a bunch of unsaved devils with a works-based gospel pretending to be pastors when, in fact, they're really bastards. So that's all I have. Let me go ahead and close in prayer. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.